Hello all, hope you're all doing well, keeping safe. Um, today I'm going to do one of your kitchen larder dishes that you would be doing in college. So I'm going to do roast partridge with juice mark chokes, textures of pear, curly kale, mushrooms and a red wine sauce. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to be looking at our our bird, our bird, okay. So partridge is classed as a game bird. Uh, it's a feathered game bird. So this is already came pre-packed, pre-prepared. Um, it's already had its, it's already had its feathers plucked. Uh, one thing you'll do when you're checking over it is just make sure there's no signs of any shot. You know, because these ten partridge tends to be shot. So just as an example, you know, just feel around. The skin and the flesh for anything that feels a little bit like mm, that doesn't feel right, it shouldn't be there. So, straight away, for example, I can feel a little bit of shot there, so I need to make sure that I remove that. So, the last thing you want is your customer, um, you know, chewing on a piece of shot because they'll lose a couple of their uh, fillings and can chip teeth. So, I'll make sure I remove that. Another thing you'll be doing is you want to check the cavity, you know, make sure there's no signs of any entrails left. So check the cavity. Check the bird itself, you know, for any really severe bruising. Um, check the breast, make sure it's nice and plump. It should have a nice pliable breastbone as well. Next thing you're gonna do, you know, is using your senses, so you know you need to smell it. Does it smell fresh or does it have a bad smell? If it's got a bad smell. Make sure that you inform your supervisor and send it back to your suppliers. Feel around there. So what I will be doing is I'm going to take the legs off. I'm going to braise the legs down. And I'm going to use the legs. I'm going to fill um, some dried out juice and artichoke skin. So what I'll be doing is I'll be baking one of the juice and artichokes. I'll scoop out the flesh. And I'm going to fill it with some braised partridge leg. But I'll be picking that down. Okay, so... Don't want to talk too much. Um, so, like I was saying about the shot, so I felt some there. I'm gonna begin by taking the legs off, and then I'll be able to get to that shot. So, all you want to do for the legs is just pull the leg from the actual crown, nip the skin. You want to keep as much skin on the crown as possible, and that's to protect it from where roasted it okay. I'm going to follow around that leg just pop it out so we're preparing the chicken and then just following the leg all the way down to the parson's nose this would have been much easier if I'd had my set of knives. Same again for this one. Okay, so just pinch the leg, let the skin hold your thumb. And like I say, you want to keep as much of that skin on the crown as possible to protect it from that heat from the roasting. Bring it around and just pop that leg out. So you've got a little bone there. We're just popping that out. Follow down. All the way down, just set your legs to one side. Right, so straight away there's a shot. As you can see, oh, little bits of shot there, so just make sure you get rid of that. Like I said before, you don't want your customer eat on that. And you can see where, just there, that's where it's been shot. So just make sure you feel you've got all that shot out and pellet. There's a little bit of bruise in there. Check that as well. I'm going to make a little incision just to make sure I've got... There's no more shot in there. No, that's fine, that's fine. Just a little bit of bruising. Okay, so... I've took the legs off, I've removed the shot. Next thing I need to do is remove the wishbone. So the wishbone is located where the neck would be. 
and like you see in you know cartoons it looks exactly the same take your knife just using the tip we're just going to start to scrape that bone down just turn that so you can see Feel it, yeah, good. And then a little incision from the top all the way down. And the reason we move the wishbone is one for ease of carving. So I'm going to cook this on the crown. I'm going to take the breast off once it's cooked. So it's going to help us with the carving, and also helps to reduce waste. You know, so you're going to get more meat off the bone. Just bring the knife down. Release the wishbone from the bottom <coughs> feel it all the way up Just make sure you scrape it right down gentle twist and pull and it should come out nice and clean okay right one side next thing I'm going to do I'm just going to take the large cook's knife and I'm just going to remove some of the carcass. Now I'm going to chop the carcass up and I'll use that for my sauce so it has a bit more depth of flavour to my sauce because what I've done beforehand before this is I've made a brown chicken stock so I've got 500 grams of chicken wings roasted them off to a nice and golden brown I've had a, a mirepoix veg roasted that off and then just to finish it off I have had a little bit of tomato puree Put it all into a large saucepan and I brought it to the boil, simmered for two hours, skimmed and then I've passed it off and it reduced it by three quarters. So next part, I've got the carcass there, like I said that's going to be using my sauce. So just using the heel of your knife, just going to chop that up, so, nice small pieces so it cooks quickly. Set that to one side. Okay, so I've got a nice crown there. Okay. Uh, one way, you, what you could do is you could you could wrap this in a little bit of streaky bacon, and it'll just help protect it. It'll keep it moist and it'll flavour it. So I'll set that one side. Right. I'm going to stop the video there. Have a big wipe down, and then I'll be getting my legs on to braise. Okay, so welcome back. What I've done is I've prepared a little small brunoise of shallot, carrot and celery. I'm going to use that for me braised legs. I've sliced some shallots and a chestnut mushroom. So I'm going to use the chestnut mushrooms and my shallot for my sauce. To that I'll add rosemary, a bit of thyme, bay leaf. Garlic for my braise. Same again, I'm going to do rosemary and thyme and a small bit of garlic. And bay leaf. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly oil my pans. To my large pan, I'm going to do my carcass, I'll fry that off first. To my smaller pan, I'll add some eggs. I'm just going to brown them off.
once that's browned off, I'll add my veg. Touch my oil in the saucepan. Just want to get dry. So, for my braised legs, okay, that's a mate. What I'm going to do now is have a little touch of red wine and some stock. So I've about 100 ml of red wine from your saucepan. These are that. So I'm going to deglaze that, take all the sediment off the pan. And that will just improve on the flavour. And then while I'm doing that, it's brought back to the boil. And I'm going to let that simmer down. Just to remove the alcohol. I want the flavour of a red wine, but I don't want the actual alcohol content. I've got my stock there, so it's nice and gelatinous due to me using fresh chicken wings. You could use convenience stock to do this, however, if you're going to use convenience stock, just bear in mind you're going to get a salty sauce and it won't reduce, it won't thicken correctly. So for my braised legs, you just want enough stock to fill uh, to to cover them. So it's about 100 ml, and then I've got about a litre left over. I'm going to add that to my sauce. But I'm just waiting for the red wine to come down. So it's starting to come down, but it's going to go a little bit. I can't really see very well, but I just want to go a bit thicker. For my braise, I'm just going to cover it with a piece of parchment. This is called a cartouche. I'm going to, I've got a square piece, make it into a triangle by folding it over. It's a square. Triangle again. Folding it in on itself, you get a little small cone shape, and then just need to cut that. So it just sits in the bottom on the top of the pan, just to make sure it's all submerged. So my red wine's come down now, and I'm going to add. Okay, so a little bit of pre-preparation that I did, uh, which I haven't really demonstrated, is I got one of my juice matches. I just picked this, the smallest one, and similar to when you're baking a jack of potato, so a little bit of salt on the bottom of a tray, um, sat the juice match up on top, pierced it just with a small knife and I've baked that until it has softened and I've scooped out the centre. I've kept the actual centre 
but I'll put that into my puree. What I'm going to do with this is stick it back in the oven and dry it out so it becomes a casing and then I'm going to fill it with my braised partridge legs. Okay. For your sauce and the partridge legs you want to bring both liquors up to the boil then down to a simmer. For your sauce you want to reduce it right down so it coats a plate and I'll show you what that looks like later on. For your partridge legs we're just going to braise them, it'll only take about 30 minutes, nice and small, not going to take too long I don't want them to dry out. Okay. Uh, the next step I'm going to go on to is I'm going to make my puree and I'm going to get me pears, textures of pear done, so I'm going to do some fresh, a little bit of pickle just to add a bit of acidity. I'm going to do some kale crisps, now I haven't got a deep fat fryer but one thing I do have is a microwave and you can do them using a microwave so I'll demonstrate that for you all. I'll do some wilted kale as well so I'll just cook that off in a little bit of butter and then I've got some chestnut mushrooms. Uh, they'll match really well, add a little bit of earthiness to the dish and I'm going to fry them off as well. Okay guys, so I'll stop the video there and I'll bring them the next step. Okay guys, so what I've done is just to do a little bit of mise en place, so pre-preparation is I've peeled down my Jerusalem artichokes and I've put them in some acidulated water, so just some nice cold water with a little bit of fresh lemon juice. I've peeled my pear and I'm just going to get a quick pickle on. So for my pickle, equal quantities of white wine vinegar, cold water, just going to put a pinch of salt in there, a couple of sprigs of thyme, it will go well with the pear, thyme and pear. And then equal quantities of sugar. So one part water, one part vinegar, one part sugar. Really simple, just pickle and liquor. Uh, I'm just going to put that on the stove, bring it to the boil. Oh, that's going to the boil. Pear. Just going to top and tail. And. Take out the core. Just going to square this up. I'm going to do a little bit of dice. So a little bit of diced pear there, that's going to get pickled, that'll be dotted around the plate. Any trim, you know you could keep, use it for, <coughs> you could make a little pear chutney. You could actually make a puree with it, I'm just going to make one today, just do a pan space. And then the remaining pear I'm going to use, I'm going to do some little nice thin slivers, just using a peeler. You could use a mandolin. Okay. Now as soon as that comes to the boil, just set it to one side, let it cool down naturally and then I'm going to get on with my puree next, so my artichoke puree for that. You need 250 grams juice from artichokes, half a shallot, half a clove of garlic and it just all wants to be really finely sliced. Um, in a pan, cover it with just an, enough water to cover it and about 50 grams of unsalted butter. You want to season it up 
Struce Marche chokes can have quite a bland flavour um, <clears throat> until you start to cook them down and they'll they do take them quite a, a nice nutty almost hazelnut flavour. So what I'll do is I'll get my juice from artichokes prepared and then I'll get the puree on for that and I'll bring you back for when that's done. Okay chef so next thing I'm going to do is show you the puree and um, just the raw ingredients you know getting the puree on. Uh, so what I'm doing is finely slicing the juice from artichokes. going into a saucepan. In there I've got half a shallot, half a clove of garlic, finely sliced, um, 50 grams of butter, a good pinch of salt and then just enough water to cover them. That's going to go on the stove and I'm going to cook that right down. Right, next thing I've done is for me Kale, so that's kale, curly kale. Right in season now. Really good, you know. You can deep fry it, you can bake it, you can wilt it down. So I'm going to do two variations. I'm going to try some kale crisps, and I'm going to wilt some down as well. So to pick it, just hold the stalk and just peel it back. That should be enough for me crisps. I've got a plate there that's a nice cling film. Just picking that right down. And what we need is a kitchen roll. Just going to get it nice and dry. And what I'm going to do is place it in a bowl. About a teaspoon of oil. Pinch of table salt. Just gonna dress that and up the plate. Make sure that you leave enough space. Now, using a microwave for this, you can do this with um, soft herbs as well. So anything like tarragon, parsley, sage. It's just a, a variation, of, you know, a different way rather than deep frying it. That's some good microwave for about three minutes altogether. I'll start with a minute just to see how it goes. Check the grills. Some partridge legs are cooking down nicely there. Just need a little bit longer because I just want the meat to fall off the bone. So pickles done, purees on, kale crisp on the go. I'm gonna pick some more down just for wilting. Mise on place plate. 
pickle. Let's have a look, see if these have worked. It's starting to cook down now. Give that another minute. Okay, chestnut mushrooms. You can use any wild mushrooms for this dish. Um, you know, trumpets go very well. Gerolds be really nice. However, they're not in season. And for this, just taking a small paring knife, cut in half, and then we're going to go into into three. So each half into three. So we should have about six pieces. Okay, like that, and then same again. I've removed the stem of the stalk. I don't like using the stem or stalk in mushrooms due to the fact of where they grow. You know, they grow in the ground, the stalks in the ground. And then what I'm going to do is just uh, neaten them up. I'm just going to take that sharp edge off the bottom. These would be quite nice pickled as well, so you could fry these off. And pickle them, but you know, I've already got one pickled element. Don't want to overpower the dish with pickle. So I'm going to fry these off to so add a nice bit of earthiness to it. Some of it. So we're getting there, I reckon, one more minute. Any trim you've got, keep your trim. That can go in your sauce. Nicely, braises on, purees on, crisps are in, mushrooms are prepared. Kale is, I've got my pickled pear. Like I said, I'll do some fresh pear as well. <coughs> and nearly there, so I'm going to stop the video there. getting there about probably another 30 seconds and then they'll be spot on but that's what we've got there nice bit of kale crisp just adds another texture another element to your dish okay okay chef so my legs have braised down and I've picked down the leg meat so that's the leg meat there and um, I've put the braising liquor back in the pan I've reduced that down so it's nice and sticky. I'm going to add that back to the leg meat just so it coats it, keeps it all moist. And just match up puree so all the liquids came down now so it's it's like unpassed mashed potato. I've added 50ml of double cream. I brought that back to the boil. That's now going to go into my blender. I'm going to blend it till it's smooth and then I'll pass that through a sieve just to make sure there's no lumps in it. I've also, so my sauces came down and I've reduced that down. It's a nice sauce consistency but I'm going to reduce that down further um, just to make sure it's nice and sticky. Way. So I've got the leg meat there, that's all mixed. Like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the half of the artichoke. So, you know, as all you're doing a jack of potatoes, so it's a, the jacket of the artichoke, so to speak. I'll fill that with the leg meat. 
and I'm going to top it with a little bit of puree and some fresh pear as well and then you know the customer would pick that up and just eat it as one so it's just something different and a nice way to serve you know all parts of the actual partridge um, you don't have to pick the legs down you could just serve the legs as is you know you could roast them roast the bird whole serve the legs with it as well um, you could do a little you could make a little uh, pastilla um, or a spring roll or do a little small mini pativier it's just utilizing you know your waste product and it's something a bit different and um, you could actually make you know, a little mini tart case and you could fill the meat with that top it with a little bit of potato puree and you've got you know a little take on a shepherd's pie so to speak but yeah so sorry about that so yeah we're getting we're getting there now um, like I say, I'm going to put the puree on. I'm not going to have a video on while I'm pureeing, but I'll show you once that's passed. Um, I've got my little garnish tray. So on my garnish tray, I've got my kale, my mushrooms, my pear, my little artichoke heart, my kale crisps, and I've got some pancetta there as well. My sauce, like I say, that's on now. That'll just get reduced down further, just towards what I'm going to be serving. Um, and then the next part really is to cook the actual bird itself and I'll talk you through that when we should come to that. Okay chefs, welcome back. So the sauce is reduced. I've uh, passed my puree. Got the puree there, just passed nice and smooth. Unbelievable flavour on that. Um, it's a shame it's not all here. It really is. I do love an artichoke puree. Um, right, so what I'm going to do is I've set up a pan of stock just convenience chicken stock because i'm going to poach my crown of partridge and then i'm going to pan fry it to finish it off and color it so first things first partridge get it all seasoned up and your salt and pepper and then that's going to go into the stock the stock at the minute is just below a simmer and I'm literally just going to gently coat that for two minutes so I'm going to stick a timer on. Um, I'm using my phone to video this so I'm going to use my microwave as a little two minute timer. I'll be doing a little bit of one pan cooking for this and I will need to stop the video to move over for when I serve it. Um, but yeah so I'm, I'm Poaching the crown of the partridge off around two minutes and then I'm going to pan fry it in the pan get some colour on there I'll baste it once that's cooked I'm then going to rest it you know think about your bird it's nice and relaxed and then as soon as you start cooking it like a mussel it's going to toughen up so you do need to rest any meat game even fish uh, before you come to carve it and serve it it also just helps the juices and run back through the meat. So just poaching that meat in there. I've reduced my sauce down. That's nice and reduced. That's ready to go. Got a nice shimmer to that. Um, I've got my little tray of all my garnish. So I'll be cooking and serving. And then I'll talk you through the dish when I finally do it. About a minute left. Um, Partridge, and I'm just going to get ready. Put the kitchen rolls to dry it off. A little turn in there. That's going to be nice, huh? That'll be spot on. Okay, 20 more seconds. I've also put some artichoke puree in a piping bag. Uh, obviously, I talked about the artichoke skin, so I'm going to put the braised leg into that, top it with some artichoke puree and a little bit of fresh pear as well. I'll add a texture. So, that's my timer. So, partridge comes out. 
that goes onto the plate. I've just got a bit of kitchen roll on that plate. And then we're gonna season that again. The time, as soon as it comes out, get it seasoned straight away. Make sure you season the cavity as well. That's there. Uh, right, oil in the pan. Now I'm using quite a large frying pan for this, so this is going to be quite fun. We'll do some more pans, nice little hot stove like we do at, at college. Just going to take that over there. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll colour it off and then I'm going to baste it with some butter. Nice hot oil, just make sure you get just pat that partridge down. You don't want any liquid going in that pan that'll start spitting even worse at you. And go in, colour it all the way around, colour it all the way around, get a nice bit of colour on the skin and brown it all over. Then I'm gonna leave it a rest and then I'll start cooking the remainder of the garnish. Okay, chef. So it'll take a couple of minutes just to get the colour. So cooking method that I've used, you know, porch and pan roast. When I was down London, uh, one of the gar uh, sorry, one of the sections, gar manger, which is it's your hot larder, so we used to have a quail dish on. And you had 70 colours, everyone got a quail. And literally this was the job of one person, just as soon as the orders came on, you know, you were poaching your quail fresh to order and then pan roasting to finish it off and colour it nicely. So the colour I'm looking for, I'm just getting that colour all the way around, nice golden brown. So a bit longer, just on the bottom of the crown. I want to get it nice and even. The reason you colour meat is to kill any bacteria that might be on the surface, so you're not sealing it off. And it adds flavour. Can improve on the texture. So, happy with the colour on that now. So I'm just gonna move that over. Now I'm gonna start basting. Okay. So start off with another butter. As soon as it starts to melt, add another knob. And another one. And then the base literally. Oops. There's no amazing technique to it, it's just tilting your pan very carefully towards you and spooning over the foaming butter. And we've got, we've got a nice foaming, nutty brown aroma and colour. Quite a lot of butter in this recipe, but fat flavour. At this point, I'm going to add a crushed clove of garlic, and some fresh thyme, and a little bit of rosemary. Maybe that's spitting now. You just want to baste for about a minute or two. And just touching it, you want the breast to be firm. You can serve part which have a little bit of pink in it, but you don't want it to be raw. Just make sure when you're basting it, you get plenty of that foam and butter into the cavity as well. Yeah, lovely. 
really good that, really happy that. So what I want to do now is, why is that true? Cartridge, just gonna put that in the tray, pour over, foaming butter. Gently cover that tin foil just to keep it hot while we carry on cooking the garnish. I can just go over there ready to carve up. So for the garnish, I'm going in the same pan. A little touch of oil. The pan nice and hot. Go in firstly with a smoke pancetta, get some colour on that. I just want that pancetta to colour, crisp up, render down the fat a little. That's there. So next I'm going to add the mushrooms. So I'll let my mushrooms cook down and then I'll season them just with a little bit of pepper and a teeny pinch of salt. Don't add too much salt because obviously the pancetta is already salty. Little knob of butter. Make sure you get nice and coloured and crispy. And like I said before, fat is flavour. Once your butter melts, I'm then going to go in with some kale. So I've got some a little bit more kale. So we've got a little bit of wilted kale. We've got some crispy kale. You know, lots of texture in this. Kale doesn't take long, about a minute. Stir it through. So my mushrooms are cooked now, as is my pan cheddar. A little bit of cracked black pepper in there. Teeniest pinch of salt. And then that's going to go into my little garnish tray to drain off the excess fat and then I can separate that. Right. Side. Okay so what I'll do next is I need to heat my plate up and heat my sauce up and then I can start looking at finishing plating off. Plating up sorry. Okay chef so partridge has rested um, all my garnish is done I've heated my plate I'm quite restricted to plates I've got and the plates I've got from home. Um, I've picked a grey plate um, just because you know you've got the white puree, the green. I think it'll quite uh, it'll offset the colours quite well. Okay, so I've got my little artichoke crisp there. I'll just heat it back up. My braised leg meat, and I'm going to stuff that in there. Puree that's in the bag. Let's take 
And then I'm just gonna feather that over. It's almost like a, a dressing for a mayonnaise. I've done that off a plate because it's all a mess if you plate up. A um, little bit of fresh pear, which I've just cut into batons. Stack of that. It's a, it's a job I used to have to do when I was at Midsummer House. I'll show you that in more detail. Puree. Spoonful on the plate. Nice little swipe. Who doesn't like a swipe? And another nice neat amount. So because I've got a round plate, you know, I'm going to try and keep everything round in the presentation. Like that. And then sit that just there. A little bit of puree there just to sit. My little quill, sorry my little partridge stack. Which lo and behold has just fell apart on me. In that puree, that's where I'm going to sit my breasts. So I'm just going to put a little bit of kale there just to give the dish some height. Some of the Couple of mushrooms. Got some mushrooms around the plate as well. Keep them try, keep them quite central. Okay, so I'm going to carve the party. It's quite difficult without a bony knife, trying to use a paring knife, my light is. And then what I like to do, something I was taught, is just want to trim it up nicely. Not too much. I was trying to keep the natural shape of the breast. So you've got the breast there, really nicely coloured, really happy with that. Sit that there. Pickle pear, so obviously I did do some dice, but I've done some shaved as well. Um, I'm deciding to go with the shaved. I think it's going to look a bit nicer. Dot that around. Just a couple of pieces, don't want too much of all the power of the dish, but it just has a little bit of acidity to you know the salt from the pancetta, the fat and creaminess from your puree.
And finally, got them little kale crisps. Just a drip over as well. sauce just to finish it off now I'll take a photo and that is a dish complete what I try and teach is when you're saucing a plate hold your spoon as though you're holding a pen or a pencil so you have more control a little bit drift over the breast there. Okay. I'm just going to flip it around. So that's my dish there. So partridge with juice and artichoke, puree, and baked. Fresh pear, pickled pear, kale, crispy, crispy kale, sorry, um, chestnut mushrooms, and roast pancetta. So, just to finish on that thing, guys. So that's the dish for today. That's what you know we would have been doing in college. Um, hope to get back into college soon. Hope you've enjoyed this video and there'll be some research set towards game you know especially um feathered birds and also looking at venison and um, i know phil's got a video prepared for you all for breaking down the whole venison so that'd be something really good to see and witness it's not something you often see in industry so make sure you watch that and take some detailed notes on it thank you guys thank you